Good afternoon, friends. They are passing it right now. Several state lawmakers are preparing to provide residents with direct financial relief. Many states have already approved billions of dollars in funding to be put towards these programs that will help low income households financially. Millions of Americans currently qualify for aid, which can be worth as much as $1,000. My dear friends, I'll be covering what you need to know, so please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you need to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. Also, at the end of today's video, I will be announcing the winners of yesterday's video, so please make sure that you do stay tuned. Uh, Mr. Caprita, uh, I mentioned in my opening comments, and I think the chairman agrees that this has to be done in a bipartisan fashion and uh, with a whole range of options on the table. Uh, too often, Democrats uh, claim that Republicans want to cut Medicare every time we put uh, or mention the troubles facing the program. So, Mr. Caprita, uh, Democrats have a record of proposing and enacting Medicare uh, cuts. Uh, I've already mentioned some in my statement. I'd like to have you elaborate if you agree with my statement. Well, both parties, I would say, have sometimes put Medicare changes on the table. They have reduced spending. Um, you can call them cuts, of course. And, um, you know, in the Affordable Care Act, there, there was a very substantial change in, particularly for inpatient hospital services, something called a productivity adjustment factor, which is still in place and permanent and has a very large cumulative effect on spending. So uh, I think many people view it as a good thing because it's brought down hospital spending quite a bit. The question is, is it sustainable over the long run? We're relying very heavily on it to keep the numbers down, but it may, the actuaries are always warning that it might be uh, um, overdone. Uh, under Medicare for All, Mr. Caprera, what happens to provider reimbursement rates and how would that uh, affect uh, care, particularly in rural America? Well. Medicare for all, I think, she needs to be viewed for, through a political economy lens. How does it get managed over time? You know, and it's very easy to, when you're facing a budget crunch, just to pay people less. And of course, when you pay providers less, eventually there's supply changes. That means fewer providers actually provide the services at the lower rates. That's how you end up with queuing problems. So I do think that uh, our multi-payer system much as we dislike many aspects of it, keeps open revenue streams that makes it so that providers are not dependent on any one player to make sure they can serve patients. And so I think uh, we, we shouldn't move away from that. Um, we always hear this business about raising taxes on the rich. Uh, during President Obama's tenure, rich was arbitrarily defined at $200,000 so as part of Obamacare, Democrats enacted three and eight tenths percent net investment tax on, at these thresholds, but didn't index them, uh, knowing it would eventually hit middle income taxpayers. Since this enactment, the number of taxpayers hit by this money grab have more than doubled from three million to seven million. Now they're proposing to quadruple the tax and claim it'll only apply to 2% of the taxpayers. So you can understand why I'm skeptical about that uh, statement. Uh, Mr. Capretta, much like three and eight tenths percent tax enacted on Obamacare, wouldn't the number of taxpayers affected by this supercharged tax uh, increase o over time, capturing more than 2% uh, of the taxpayers? If you don't index the income thresholds upon which a tax is applied, of over time the nominal va uh, the real value of those thresholds, of course, erode due to inflation. So we've had bracket creep the pa in the past in our tax system, 
And it sometimes is sustainable and sometimes not, depending on what's going on. Uh, there usually is eventually some pushback on it. For the second straight year, Colorado's Low Income Energy Assistance Program is receiving a record number of applications. With residents worried about how to heat their homes this winter season and temperatures plummeting, the program is getting filled with new applicants. But lawmakers are urging all residents to take action and apply while there is still time left. Each household can apply for one heating and cooling assistance program per year. The state of Georgia received $139.4 million this year for the program. Funds are available to homeowners and renters who need help to heat their homes. But the amount is determined based on household size, income, and the number of seniors in the home. To qualify, a family's income must be less than or equal to 60% of the median income for a Georgia family. For a household of one, the income threshold is $29,713. And for a household of five, the income threshold is $66,000. $284. Also, the Oklahoma Department of Human Services is now accepting online applications for the program. Eligible households already receiving assistance through Oklahoma Human Services can be pre-authorized to receive the program for their winter heating period, which means they do not need to complete an application. One-time tax rebates are still on the way to Alabama tax filers. The Alabama governor said that since December 1st, more than half a million rebate checks and over 850,000 direct deposits have been processed. The rebates will not be subject to Alabama income state taxes. Rebates will cost the state approximately $393 million, which comes from a $2.8 billion surplus in the Education Trust Fund. The tax rebate checks promised in Virginia's much-delayed budget should also be arriving in mailboxes for eligible residents. For several weeks now, checks for up to $200 for individuals and $400 for those who filed joint returns have been mailed out. The rebates follow last year's $4 billion of tax relief and were the core of this year's package that also included an increase in the standard deduction to $8,500 for individuals and $17,000 for joint filers. Other tax relief measures eliminated the state portion of sales tax on groceries, although local sales taxes still apply. Governor Youngkin said last year's tax relief sparked a surge of growth in the state, attracting businesses and encouraging people to move here and stay here for the jobs that resulted. Also, for the third time in a row, Governor Gretchen Whitmer has proposed a tax savings plan aimed at boosting vehicle sales in the state of Michigan. The Michigan vehicle rebate proposed by Governor Whitmer earlier this month comes after two previous unsuccessful attempts, asking lawmakers to approve similar plans to lower the cost of purchasing a new electric vehicle in the state. The head of the Michigan Automobile Dealers Association praised the proposal and said this program will directly support Michigan residents. It also highlights the importance of new vehicle sales to our state economy. Governor Whitmer asked lawmakers to approve similar proposals in her last two budget requests. But this time, Governor Whitmer has cut her latest proposal in half, asking the state legislature to allocate $25 million to fund her proposed Michigan vehicle rebate program, compared to the $15 million she originally asked for. Governor Whitmer plans to ask lawmakers to allocate the funding in her upcoming State of the State address. Whitmer's proposal does not specify a date when the rebate would expire. Instead, the savings program would continue until the money runs out. Well, my amazing and most awesome friends, 
That is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. My dear friends, thank you for being part of this community. The winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway is Alberto Jr. and Wayne Davis. Congratulations, my dearish friends. To claim your gift cards, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or my friends, you could message me on my Facebook page. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed Christmas weekend.